let me show you something. This electric scooter has a fingerprint sensor. You start it by putting your finger right there and you're good to go. This is Auto Trader UK, where we drive the latest, the greatest, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So strap in, subscribe, and if you have been watching, don't stop. Don't ever stop. So, you're looking for a cheap way to get around, you want to beat the traffic, and you hate the idea of paying for petrol. Well, guess what people? The vehicle you're looking for might be an electric scooter, and today, I'm riding one of the most interesting to come along in quite some time. This, my friends, is the Miku Super from Sunra. Here's the facts and figures. It costs three and a half grand after the government grant. It has a four horsepower hub motor. It does 50 miles an hour and it has a maximum range of 65 miles. So it's perfect on paper for commuting around town. Definitely worth a closer look. I think you might agree. Right, let me show you around. Actually, before I do that, some good news. If you're a regular viewer, you will know that every single month, Auto Trader gives away a brand new electric car for free to one of you guys. And this month is no different. Well, actually it is different because not only are we giving away an electric car, we're also giving away this Sunra Miku Super to one of you. And when I say this Sunra Miku Super, I do mean this exact bike, which my bottom has sat on. This bike could be yours. Read the description box below and find out how you can win. Right, now let me show you around. It's a very funky looking bike, the Miku Super. I love the floating seat design, so it's all hollowed out under here, and that makes it look like almost nothing else on the market. It's got a slightly naked bike look to it, so there's not much in the way of fairing, there's no windscreen, but there are lots of really cool details scattered all around the bike. For example, this light up badge on the side, which I've never seen on another bike before. Really love this front headlight cluster, which looks tremendous. And also a nice big TFT screen, which gives you all the information you could ever need. That fingerprint sensor I mentioned earlier, not only starts the bike, it also opens up a storage compartment. Hold your finger on it and it pops open to reveal a nice area for keeping your mobile phone, your wallet, a small man bag perhaps, and it also has a USB port, which is an underrated feature in a bike. That's great for charging a mobile phone or a sat nav, for example, so very handy. Underneath that storage compartment is where you'll find this bike's removable batteries. I'm gonna talk more about that later on. But before that, let me talk you through the various features around the bike. So on the left handlebar, you've got your flashes for telling people to move out the way. You've also got hazard lights, Indicators, which do not self-cancel, you've got to actually move it back to the zero very painstakingly. That could become difficult with cold fingers in the winter. You've got a horn. And on the right-hand side, you've got a standard headlight control. You've got P for parking and a mode button that switches between slow, medium, and slightly quicker than medium. And you've also got this R button, which is a reverse gear. Bet you haven't seen that before on a bike. Well, what it does is you push R, and then twist the, whoop, that's not reverse. <laughs> Push R, twist the uh, old throttle, and it goes backwards. Unfortunately, it's a bit too quick. It seems to go one speed, and that's fast, which is a little bit too out of control for my liking. I'm not actually sure you need a reverse gear, given the fact that the bike is super light. But anyway, let's go forward again. I'm going backwards. <laughs> How do I look? Pretty stylish? I don't know, there's always a potential for a big person to look a bit silly on a smallish bike or a scooter, but hey, this thing at least feels fine. It doesn't feel undersized at all. And the first thing you notice is that it's very quiet and very smooth. You don't have any vibration or noise from the motor. You really notice that in the wing mirrors. Okay, they're a bit on the small side, but they don't vibrate and that really helps the visibility. If you're asking who can actually ride this, well, it's like a normal scooter really. So you need an A1 bike license or a CBT, which you can get from the age of 17. Essentially, it's equivalent to a 125cc petrol scooter. 
As I said earlier, there are three driving modes, A, B, and C. Keep it in mode A and it limits you to 30 miles an hour. Mode B raises the limit and takes you to 40 miles an hour. And mode C, well, let's find out, shall we? Okay, so we are now at 43, 45, 46, 48, 48. Maybe if I tuck in a little bit, come on, come on. 48, okay, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe I'm a little bit uphill. It's very simple to ride this bike, it really is. You just twist and go. One slight issue is that it's quite hard to maintain a steady speed. Holding it at half throttle makes the bike want to slow down quite a lot. So I constantly have to go to full throttle and then ease off again so that my right wrist is always on the go. It's a bit odd, but you do get used to it. The handling is quite nice. It feels really nimble. It's only 109 kilograms, which is pretty similar to a normal petrol scooter. And it's very eager to change direction. It's a lot of fun in the corners and quite easy to avoid obstacles like manhole covers or potholes. And credit to the brakes, they feel strong. They regenerate, so they recharge the batteries when you use the brakes, but the regen isn't powerful enough so that you really notice. But when you pull either the left or the right brake lever, that operates the front and the rear brakes at the same time, so you don't have to worry about locking up the front or the rear brakes individually and flying over the front or sliding away at the back. As for comfort, yeah, it's all right. It's not the plushest suspension in the world, I wouldn't want to spend all day on one, but the fact is you can't anyways, it's limited by the range. So for commuting and knocking about town, it's definitely soft enough, not bad. You know what? I'm actually enjoying this. It's not the fastest scooter in the world. The torque is okay, but then it kind of tails off towards the top end. I wouldn't want to ride it outside of any road with more than a 40 mile an hour speed limit, but I tell you what, it's a decent little bike. Obviously, nothing in this world is perfect, and there are a few areas for improvement on the Miku Super. First of all, there is no center stand, and the side stand leaves the bike a bit too vertical for my liking. That means if someone accidentally bumps into it, it's very easy to knock over. <sighs> Had the heart going there for a second. The next thing I'm not a massive fan of is the charging situation. So down here, I've got the charging cable, and You'd think that they gave you enough space in the storage compartment for the charger, but it's a bit too big to fit, which means it's gonna be quite difficult to carry this around with you. You've always got to carry this in a backpack, for example, to make sure you don't get stranded if you go beyond the bike's claimed range. There's another slight problem with the charger, and that is it's not water resistant, which means when you're charging up outdoors, that could get wet. That means you need a nice, long extension cable to keep this in the dry. Incidentally, the other end of the charger is not your typical type one or type two plug. That means you can't charge this bike at a typical electric car charging point. Now, let me show you the removable batteries because those are a really cool feature, but they're not without their problems. So, underneath here, you open that up, you pop that out. I'll go around the back of the bike, make it a bit easier. Oh, I think you have to turn off the isolators so you don't get electrocuted. <laughs> then you, this is all being done in real time, by the way. You turn that blue thing, you turn this other blue thing, remove the cables, I'll do one at a time. Okay, tuck that out of the way, pull that, and that's one battery, <sighs> very heavy. Um, and then you go back in for the second battery. Oh, but well, that's locked itself, so now I need to use my fingerprint to unlock the storage compartment, fingerprint, fingerprint. Oh no, I've turned off the isolator and I've disconnected the battery, which means that won't open anymore. So now I need the key again, which is luckily in my back pocket. Turn that, unlock that, drop the key, then turn that thing, tuck that out of the way, pull that that way. Now the cables are in the way. Oh, there we go. And now we have the removable batteries, which let me tell you, are not the lightest in the world. It's actually very heavy. So 
it's a bit of a faff. I think you do kind of have to carry these into your house to charge them up. And because it's so heavy, it's not going to be for everyone. Sunra say the Miku Super can recharge in four hours with both batteries connected to the bike. Charge times are longer when charging the batteries individually and it isn't exactly convenient as you'll have to set a timer to remind you when to put the second battery on the charger. A single larger battery would have been a more elegant solution. One really cool feature about the Miku Super is the app which has a load of features. You can lock or unlock it, you can turn the ignition on and off, you can open the storage compartment just like that and you can mute it to stop it making all kinds of weird noises. Speaking of weird noises, it also has an alarm system. You can demonstrate that with either the app or the key. I'm gonna use the key in this case, so I'll lock it, and then I'll pretend I'm a thief who's come along with a screwdriver, for example, to try and make off with the bike. That's me stealing it. And then it gives me a few warning beeps to say, get away from me, before it goes completely nuts. Quite handy. And you can stop that with either the key or the app. Job done. I guess the big question is, is this bike worth spending your money on? Listen, three and a half grand is quite a lot of cash. You can easily get a petrol powered scooter for around a two grand mark if you shop around, even less. And even though petrol prices are high right now, you'll have to ride a hell of a lot before you start recouping money by using cheap electricity. But having said that, it only costs about 26 pence a day to run, so it's not bad. I've got to say though, I've got a slight problem with the range. Around town, I suspect you get decent range, not too far off their claimed 80 kilometers or 56 miles. But if you live somewhere that requires you to constantly be near the bike's top speed or anywhere above 40 miles an hour, the battery will die faster than you expect. 25 to 30 miles in my experience. Ask me how I know. <laughs> oh, and especially because the display doesn't show remaining range in miles, only the remaining battery level as a percentage. And that sort of range might be okay for a commute, but you do have to be mindful. So do I recommend it? Listen, it's all right this thing. If your daily drive isn't too far or too fast and you've got the cash, then it does the job. There are definitely cheaper scooters and there are definitely electric scooters that have better battery charging solutions, but you've got to respect the Miku Super. It looks really cool. I love the fingerprint sensor and it's a lot of fun to drive. If it fits your lifestyle, why not? Okay, cheers for watching guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and don't forget to enter our monthly electric car giveaway, including this month's where we are giving away this exact bike. Details are down below. Laters.